Oh, yeah, freaky and at the freaky's ball time, y'all. How the hell y'all doing out there this evening, uh, Friday night here, November 22nd, 2019. Yes, this is the Freakers Ball. We are live once again. Myself and the Mighty Moose Girl, who will be calling in momentarily. But let me say hi and howdy to all the places that we're broadcasting to. Uh, primarily, com on the Freakers Ball show page. But you can go directly on over to Vaughn.Live slash Real Liberty Media and check out the video stream there. If you want to hear the audio stream only, then you can do that from RealLibertyMedia.com, RLMRadio.xyz, over there on FreedomsNetwork.com. Yeah, they're back! And RealLiberty.org. Also on uh, TuneIn.com, Internet Radio, Shoutcast, a whole host of places. So howdy and welcome to all you folks listening on the audio stream and here on the video stream. Come on over to the chat wherever you may be tuned in from, and uh, yeah, just be part of the part of the chat, part of the show. You can make song requests. You can do all kinds of fun stuff over here in the chat room, right there on reallibertymedia.com or irc.freenode.net. Pound pound real liberty media, and you'll be in here talking to all the wonderful folks that are here tonight and. Most Friday nights, yeah, we got a nice group. We got the uh, barman, that's my, 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 my bot, my original bot. And Mr. Beetle, myself, and the Moose Girl are here. Miss Kate, the lovely Miss Kate. Uh, we have Anti and Asmodeus Asmo, Chelsea Doni, the Java Doctor. We got, we got, we got, we got a phone call. We got a phone call from, oh, there she is, from the Mighty Moose Girl. Hello, hello. I heard noise, and then I didn't hear noise. Moose girl, are you muted? <laughs> I heard a sound, and then I didn't hear a sound. Are you there? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to assume she's uh, working on something. Let me finish the list of people here. We got the Java doctor, Mr. Pondergander. Pondergander did his show earlier today, the Pondergander show. <laughs> Poopster and Prince. Who took last night off? Uh oh, did Moose drop off? Moose dropped off. Okay, we'll wait for her to call back. Uh, we we got Rob Works, Mr. Rob Works, uh, the Rome's mom, A.K.A. Darth Rome's uh, Vanna White. Yes, yeah, she's a wonderful bot. Vin E. <laughs> A.K.A. Ponder Gander, the Weather Dork, Phantom ZC66, Joe Skirall, Joe Skirall, you strange bird. We got the lovely, lovely Miss Circle. Over there in Denmark, the Cy Borg Noodle, the lovely Miss Dan Van Meter. Yes, indeed. E Man and N Siv and Frumpy Frump, Frumpstar. You there? <laughs> JJ's is here with us tonight. Uh, Pone Sauce, the Poner, the Pone, he pones that sauce, man. Let me tell you. You got the Sock Puppet. Sock Puppet. And we got the Slim Jim Flim, the Flim Flam Man, Smart Ass. The holiest of holy rogers. Uh, and check out the holy roger coin, should you so desire. Uh, we got Miss Van Meter. Oh, we got, we got, we got a Van Meter and a damn Van Meter. Damn Van Meter! <laughs> and lastly, but not leastly, in the list of people that are here in the chat room, Zipix! Zipix! Yes, all kinds of lo lovely and wonderful folks. I, I I don't I don't know what happened to the moose there. She was on the line and then she dropped off. I, I couldn't hear her when she called, so uh, I assume she's around somewhere. Let me tell you, it's uh, today today. In case you're unaware, <laughs> not that it matters at this point. Well, I guess it matters still because I mean, maybe you know the the original big lie perpetrated in the faces of everybody. 56 years ago today. Yes, that's right. The JFK murder. And we have one, two, one, two, three. Hello? Oh. Hello. Hello. There, there she are. There she is. All right. Here I am. <laughs> All right. Good. Had a, little, had a little glitch there? I don't know. Who knows, dude? It's me. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Do you question these things? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's me. It, it, <laughs> who knows? It's, 
Who knows? It's the moose. It is. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is I. I am here. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, Mo uh, Donna is having a split personality situation going on here. Oh, yeah. all right then. <laughs> good. So that's good. So how you doing? I made it through another week, dude. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, I'm knocking on wood here. It's, it was good. Got through the week. And here yeah. I am. Cool, cool. So, uh, how about you? Well, I'm here too, so I guess I made yeah, it through the week. Yeah, you got through the week. Obviously. I, I made it through the week as well. We had some snow awesome. yesterday. We had snow yesterday. Oh, snow! Yeah, about three, four inches, but uh, it, it, it 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 mostly melted off today. It was a little warmer today, so yeah, yeah. That's enough to make it greasy, though. Well, I suppose so. When it's c coming down before they get out. Well, around here we have salters and sanders and plows and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm talking about in the yard. Yeah, you know. Oh, yeah, in the yard <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah and Ty, we're, we're used to your split personality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to talk split personality, just look at Vinny. That guy, that guy is just look at what? Vinny. Yeah, oh. oh, he's he's a man of a thousand personalities. <laughs> no, he's just a hillbilly, dude. He's just a hillbilly. <laughs> oh, oh, that's man. funny. <laughs> tell you. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man. I went and saw that, that, that kid play last weekend, last Friday night. Yeah, what's well, his name Where again? I was. What what? What, what? what was his name again? Julian Davis. Julian Davis. And apparently he was on America's Got Talent when he was 16 years old. Oh, well, great. And um, I guess. he is 20 now. And he's just this old, like, I did. I watched this, this special that they did on him from, like, his hometown in Kansas or whatever. Is that still a show? Uh yeah, okay. still going on. Yeah. Okay, so he. Did... I don't watch it, but yeah, it All is. Right. So, there was, so there was a special in Kansas. There was a special on him on like the local news station when he was like sixteen. He was, you know, during this time that he was on the show, and I watched that, and they like interviewed his mom and everything, and you know, they did a whole documentary on him and stuff. Anyway, he's really good. He's really talented. He was playing with a banjo player from Minneapolis. Yeah. Another, he's, he's 26. Kid to me. Still a kid. Yeah, yeah. And then a bass, stand-up bass player. Cool. So, um, but yeah, he's he's played with Billy Strings. He actually played with Jeff Austin at Blue Ox Music Festival. Okay. So, which is pretty special. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, he was, I, it was like a really small spot. <laughs> and there was like couches set up. And we brought our own beer and everything. <laughs> it was crazy. It was weird, but it was cool because it was like an intimate setting. There's probably like 20 people there. Yeah. Well, I was trying to remember. It's, I was trying to remember his name at the beginning of last week. So, and I couldn't remember his name, but I remember the video uh -huh. that you shared in that video. So I just said he was. He's like a, a blue man, rope Smurf kind of guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's <laughs> because no, the video. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that one video. Yeah, that one. The the the, the color is all screwed up in that one or whatever. But yeah. um, he is a really good singer, and he you can tell he's an old soul. Like even in that special, they're like, people say you're an old soul. Do you agree with that? And he pretty much agreed with it. I mean, he's like, yeah, I think so. You know. Well, so, cool. yeah. Really well spoken. Really personable. Um. You know, it was really, he was really cool. So are you saying he was uh, clean and articulate? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's an old reference back to something that you, Never mind. <laughs> okay. All right, then. So, yeah, um, it was really fun. 
And it was, I mean, there was, like, a bunch of my friends there. It was, like, all these people that I knew were there. It was basically, like, the bluegrass junkies of the town, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. So, so you, got, you got your regular crowd of of you people. Yes, us people, us. <laughs> Those people. Yeah, that's great. That's Those great. type of people that like that type of music. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you know, know what? I don't care what other people think. <laughs> it's like, hey, it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a good, healthy habit to have, all right? It's a small, select crowd that, that goes to these bluegrass things. Well, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. I don't know what you mean by small, but... Well, smaller than, say, people... Blue Ox is 30,000 people. Well, that's true. Blue Ox is 30,000. All right. All right. I mean, Tell You Ride has probably 50,000. Okay. Northwest String Summit probably has about 15. Okay. People, thousand people that go there. All right, all right. I mean, it's you'd be surprised. I would be surprised. Bluegrass <laughs> is like the heart and soul of music. <laughs> <laughs> all right. To me, to me. No, I mean, no, no, that's you know. good. That's good. That's good. Other people probably would agree, disagree. I'm sure, but to me, See? Rob is that's very. That's where it's Rob, at, man. Rob, that's where it's at. Rob, Rob is very surprised. About what? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no, it's huge, dude. I mean, you, you have, okay, at Blue Ox, the age range is one-year-old to 90, okay? Okay. Seriously. You have these people that they have an area, you know, back from the stage a little bit, but it's a big stage. It's raised up. It's a huge stage, right? I'm thinking, so, like, I'm thinking, certain ages of people, what? I'm thinking that the uh, the one-year-old's, they they probably yep. they probably didn't really choose to go there. No, they, they're going there <laughs> because their parents have brought them there. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, people bring their kids to blue bluegrass music festivals, like big ones. Yeah, sure. So they have an area set a, a little bit back from the stage, where that's the chair area, and like the 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 little shade tent area, not not the pop up ones, like the ones that are on the ground. Okay. Like, I have one of them. They're called, like, an umbrella, like a soup, a beach umbrella or something. Right, right. And um, so those are, you can have those back because people, like, set up rows of chairs. And you'll get your 60 to 80 to 90-year-olds sitting in the chairs. They just sit there all fucking day long, dude. Sure. Sitting in the bluegrass. I mean, they're not dancing. They're not, obviously they're not fucking you know getting down, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but they're uh, they're there. You yeah, know? Vinny had some bluegrass going during his show today. Whoa! Yeah, he played uh, Wagon Wheel. I forget who the band was playing it, but Old Troll. No, no, somebody else. Serious Rucker. No. Oh, different band. I yeah, that know. that song. That song's overplayed, dude. That but, song, people need to stop playing well, that goddamn a, song. It's one of those standards, you know. So. Well, yeah, but there's so many other good standards out there that that one kind of needs a break. <laughs> but um, it is just, it's so hard to explain the reason I love bluegrass so much is because it's non-electric. Like, you can be sitting around a campfire with somebody with a freaking guitar and have a good old time. Sure, sure. You don't need to plug it in, you, you know. You don't need to, but, you know. You don't need a speaker. You don't need You know, you mean. just play an instrument. That's true <laughs> playing an instrument. That's none of this, you know, electricity shit. Okay, I'm not saying that electric guitars are bad. I'm not saying that. I'm, glad I'm to just hear saying, that. or that music played with electric instruments is bad. I'm not saying that at all. Even Billy Strings bought a brand new electric guitar last week. Two weeks yeah, ago. and apparently he had one before. Well, I mean, he's a guitarist, dude. He can play anything. He can pick up any instrument, literally any string instrument, probably, and play the fucker. You know what I mean? Right, right. Because that's what musicians do. That's what they do. 
Okay. <laughs> they know music. They know how to play an instrument. Yeah, sure. But it to me that's the appeal right there is the acoustic aspect of it. All right. Do you know what I mean? Like that's how it was before electricity, dude. Of course. So it's music from your past, the past. From you know, yeah. actually, the banjo originated from Africa. Did you know that? I did not know that. Tis true. Okay. Because they would take the, well, how it became a thing was like the body of it, like the you know, it was like a a gourd, right? Okay. And then they put some type of animal skin on top, like kind of like a drum, except like the bottom's rounded, you know. Right. And then they would take some kind of stick or something, you know, uh-huh. and put something made some kind of strings on there, and that's where that's seriously the banjo originated in Africa. Okay. Yeah. See, isn't that cool? That's great. So how it became an instrument was. When the slave trade was going on, the the people would they would come here and they would make these banjos, right? All right. And so then it evolved from there into what we have now. Great. The bluegrass slash blues are really intertwined, like Americana type music. I guess that's what that's like the catchphrase for music that was made here in this country. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that originated here? Right. <laughs> so, blues and bluegrass and country music go, like, hand in hand, just about. Like, there's just a lot of lines get blurred. Like, true, Rob, you can't rock without power. Like, I get that. I totally love rock and roll, okay? And, and the blues. Like, I love both of those genres of music, okay? No doubt about it. I mean, Grateful Dead, they were not an acoustic band. Well, sometimes they do. So, so, no, so, come on. But, but they all do acoustic from time to time. Oh, yeah, they can do it. Just like Billy, he chooses bluegrass, but he can fucking be a fucking total rock star, dude. Sure. An electric guitar. I mean, he's seriously good, but... He 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 just got this old soul, you know, and you can tell he loves it, and all the members of the band love it. They wouldn't be doing it if they didn't. I agree. So, and that <laughs> shows, that will show, like, if you're out there being a musician, but you're not liking it, that's going to show. Like, the crowd's going to pick up on that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're going to suck. Yeah, you're going to suck. The crowd's going to pick up on it. They're going to be like, what the hell? Hey, you know, pick it up you know on something I mean? here. This guy sucks. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, he's not into it. Whatever, you know? Yeah. So, it's just, I mean, like, there's, okay, there's one example. And I'm good, I can say his name because they're a national touring band. You can say it if they this, want. The, the, the Under Mountain String Man, okay, yeah, yeah. they had Jeff Austin. But then something happened where Jeff left the band. Okay. So then they got this new guy, Jake Jolliffe, right? Okay. Well, he is he's the mandolin player, right? Just like Jeff Austin was, right? Right. Anyway, he is really good at mandolin. I'll give him that. But he shows no emotion when he plays the instrument. Like, he looks like he's bored as fuck. And his the look on his face, too, sometimes it's like, yeah, I'm really good at this instrument. And he just looks totally bored, like... He's just up there, like, going, like, blah, 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 playing it, playing it, just looking really like, oh, yeah, I'm really, I'm awesome with this instrument, and you guys are all, like, privileged to be watching me. You know what I mean? It's like, that's not the kind of attitude to have, dude. <laughs> Sorry, but it's not. He's a, he, what, he, go ahead. He, he's a technician, not an artist. Right, and it's just like, dude, you know, yeah, you're really good at what you do, but you show no emotion at all. You don't, you, you look like you're bored. Like you don't even want to be here. No, it's 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 all the time. And then even when like the one festival I went to, and this was a few, this was like five years ago, at Boats and Bluegrass, he was like the artist at large. They call it. 
like sometimes festivals will have like what they call an artist at large, which is like they pick one artist and then that artist like sits in with some of the other bands on one song or two songs. You know what I mean? Sure. And then they play with the regular band too, but he, the Rick Yonder wasn't there that year, but he was. Okay. And he would walk around in the festival like that too, like that, that kind of attitude. Like never saw the dude smile. Like you know what I mean? I mean, dude, if this is how you want to make your living, and you're, you know what I mean, you shouldn't, you should change your fucking attitude, dude. <laughs> this is just the impression I got. Now, maybe he is a really nice guy, you know, whatever, I don't know, but he just did not do it for me. Right. Even though he can play mandolin really fucking good, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, yeah, it's just... Um, I get it, I get it, I get it. But speaking right. of music, let's uh, play some of our let's own Let's play here. some. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how about that? <laughs> That's how it works here. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is. Oh, look at that guy. Who's that guy? He knows how to play music. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Absolutely. On this freaky ride. Ooh, that's, ooh, I like that looks of that guy. He, he knows how to play yeah, music. He, yeah, he's and, a hottie. He's a hottie. Well, I don't know about that, but he does enjoy playing the music. You can tell. <laughs> yeah, no, he, trust me, he's a hottie. All right. Trust me. All right. He is. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Joe Bonamassa. <laughs> oh, yeah. It just shuts off right there. Darn it. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, the folks you saw there on that stage, that was a Miss Kate request, by the way. But the folks, folks you saw up there on that stage, uh, you had uh, Junior Wells, Lonnie Brooks, Blues Traveler, Johnny Lang, Eddie Floyd, Wilson Pickett, Aretha Franklin, Sam Moore, uh, Louisiana Gator Boys, B.B. King, Jeff Skunk, Baxter, Gary U.S. Bonds, Eric Clapton, Clarence Clemens. The list goes on. Jimmy Vaughn, Travis Tritt, yes, indeed, Coco Taylor. <laughs> oh, man. All kinds of folks. Anyway, there's a lot more than that that I listed there. Coco Taylor is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that was uh, New Orleans uh, from the uh, Blues Brothers 2000, I believe. Uh, so That must have been Johnny Lang the Kid. Uh, what year was that from? Yeah, two, uh, 1980, I guess. Oh, no, that wasn't Trump. It could yeah, have been. I don't know. Anyway, before that... No, we had, no. I don't know. Well, whatever. But before that, we had the Trampled by Turtles there doing fake plastic trees, radio head cover... And kicked it off with Joe Bonamassa Blues Deluxe, live at the Royal Albert Hall. Now, uh, With the stiffs in the audience, though. Like, really? <laughs> anyway, he Those just, people were... Yeah, that was crazy. He he just re-released that video on uh, the 19th here. So, oh, know, nice. Like, uh, earlier this week. So, uh, yeah, all good stuff, man, all good stuff. Really good, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, let's see if I got anything bookmarked from... I missed last week, so I might have something to say from blah, blah, blah. Sure, you might. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we talked about that before, I think. <laughs> anyway, I'm just, like, drowning out, like, totally zoning out the fucking impeachment shit. Like, I'm totally, like, no... Yeah, I'm listening right? to music. I'm not. I'm not paying attention to it. I fucking. I can't stand it. It's like. <laughs> okay. Well, none of it matters anyway. So what's the big deal? Uh, it I, doesn't. I, right. I, I, I but mean, that's why know. I don't give it my time. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's just, it's just useless waste of time. And uh, who yeah. cares? Who cares? Okay. Let's uh, let's say they actually uh, ma uh, magically somehow got rid of Trump, which they're not going to do. But no. just, just say they did somehow. Then what? Did he get Pence? Is that better? Uh, <laughs> maybe, so, Shoot, hang on. So, 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 How am I getting video? I, I don't know. Oh my god, this sucks. <sighs> Sorry, Graham. All right, Go ahead. And, and then let's say you get rid of. We get rid of Trump and parents. Right. Then, then, then what do you get? Nancy Pelosi? <laughs> right. You don't get any better. It's all nuts old. It's like, get rid of all of them. Impeach them all. They're all fucking... Get get rid of it. Like, yeah. it's it's worthless. It, it, they're it so... Is. They're so fucked up. 
Yeah. It, it's just it's just so fucked up. It's it, just like really, you, you people are fucking. You you realize these people are all fucking insane, right? Oh, it's ridiculous stuff. They're all insane. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know we're letting. I'm not letting them. I don't want to be there. I don't. You know. I'm one fucking person, and hell would like be all over my shit for that. You know, but at the end of the day, I am only one motherfucking person. You know. Sure. And there is one person can make a difference. I agree. But there's only so much some people can do, you know, and I get it, you know, and you you have to it's good to be passionate, it's good to be knowledgeable and it's good to stand up for what's right when you know it's right. You know? Sure. You know it. You, it's not just your opinion, when something's right, it's right. That's right. Correct? You know? <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so, so, you, so I have, I'm sitting here, and you can tell me wh okay. where do where you fall in the numbers that they suggest, because... Oh, jeez, they... Well, it, it's it's a deal. It's a deal, and okay, I, 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 get it. I, I get it. I think you'll agree with this one, actually. Um, okay. Okay. This is posted on Loudwire. dot com, and the uh, title of the article it says "Study: Listen to seventy eight minutes of music each day for mental health benefits." Yeah, I believe that. So, I believe that is true. So are you above or below that 78-minute number? I would say I'm a little bit below that. Like, maybe not on the weekend. No, i say I'm right in there because, dude, like, I get out and see live music all the time. Yeah. Like, maybe not every day, but, like, well, I make uh, up it, for it, it when I go, you it, know what I mean? It doesn't say live. No, but it's still listening to music. Right. I, I'm I'm well above that number. Um, oh, okay. Well, I'm sure you are, but <laughs> like I, well, no, I have to take that back because at the job I have now, I stream a lot the radio, the the hockey, the uh, old classic country radio station. So, okay, you know, I do this. I would say I'm above that level, above mm -hmm. that standard of 78 minutes. Good. That's good. That's very good. Yes. Yes. All right. Anyway, here's here's the article here. Uh, okay. a, new, a new study by the British Academy of Sound Therapy, or BAST, suggests that listening to 78 minutes of music each day mm -hmm. is recommended for the maintaining of good mental health. Furthermore, I believe that. Uh, furthermore, it can only take an average of five minutes of music each day to feel, wow. to feel happier. Yeah, see, that's why like, when I'm sitting up at my desk... And it's the front desk, but we barely ever get people in there. Like, the only people we get in there every day, for sure, uh -huh. are, like, employees or the mail people or yeah. UPS people. Yeah. So it's very little, like, people, you know, like, the, a lot of people, like, we get some people that come in there, like, the public, but not very many. Right. So it gets, it's really dead and quiet up there. So I'm, like, I'm streaming some kind of music. Like, I turn the speakers way down to, like, 11. Hell, yeah. You know? But I'm still streaming it. Wait, like I'm not just wait. sitting up here in the silence. You turn them down to eleven. Well, <laughs> yeah, because I can't have it blaring, Graham. You know, it's enough for uh, uh, I can hear just, it. You know what I mean? Uh, you, you, you you don't remember Spinal Tap? Oh no! See, well, I do see, remember see, it. Our, 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 you our, know what? You know it scientifically. I do not uh, know it scientifically. That movie. No, no, <laughs> okay, this is a Spinal Tap. So. Uh, well, our our amplifiers they're louder than everybody else. See, most people they their amplifiers only go to ten. Ours go to eleven. Go to eleven. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Well, you know, but on the on your speaker icon, it could go to a hundred. I mean, I have it at eleven, dude. And then yeah. I turn the volume on the actual player for the thing down a little bit too. You know. All right. But well, I can hear it at least, and you know you have to do yeah, some yeah, commercials. Well, but well, at least I'm listening to the cool fuck, the coolest radio station around here, which right. is one hundred six point seven, which is the classic country. All right. They play like stuff like Patsy Cline. And, All right. Well, anyway, the, like the article goes on to say, mm -hmm. Slayer each day keeps the doctor away, 
It's no, no. It's I'm science. <laughs> Slayer, come on now. Slayer. No, other Slayer. kinds of music can do that too. Not just Slayer. <laughs> no, I'm sure. Slayer doesn't get the rights on this. There's no, two, it's two, no, they're two, not, no. They're no, just, no, no. They're just. It's it's a it's a heavy metal. But they need to listen to some Billy Moore fucking strings and get back to me, or some Wife and Panic and get back to me. It's it's because, heavy. Dude, or some Joey Bonamassa because dude Slayer don't get to cap. Get this. No, it's, they it, don't get this. It's a heavy metal website. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, the the, ba- the Bast study, which was condition- commissioned by Deezer, shows what music lovers already know, that music is essential for maintaining one's mental health. As Donna points out right there, she listens to way more than 78 minutes. Good. Because it, it's good for seizure girl's brain. Uh, the, nice. stu- the study good. The study documented the effects of music on... 7,500 people globally, based on individuals' experience with music and mental health, BAST suggests a balanced diet of different moods of music is key. So, certainly, you know, some bluegrass will be in there. Uh, Right, bluegrass, blues, rock, jazz, classical. It says, including sounds which make you feel uplifted, relaxed, motivated, and even sad. Ulti- right. Ultimately, a recommended intake of music each day, which, you know, whatever, um, <laughs> four, 14 minutes of uplift, uplifting music to feel happy, that's 18% of your musical RDA, uh, six, 16 minutes of calming music. Are you kidding six, me right now? What? I'm just like, are they kidding? They haven't broken down to exactly this type of oh, music. Yeah, that even had, that's ridiculous. Okay, that's taking it too far. 16, 16 minutes of no. calming music to feel relaxed. 16, <laughs> 16 minutes of music to overcome sadness. 15 minutes of, mu- of motivating music to aid concentration. Uh, seven, 17 minutes of music to help manage anger. Uh, wow! Cool. <laughs> this, the most common emotional benefit for the listener was relaxation, with ninety ninety yes. percent of participants reporting their music choices helped them to relax. Eighty two percent reported greater levels of happiness. Forty seven percent claim music helps them to overcome the sadness. Thirty two percent report better concentration, and twenty eight percent successfully use the music to deal with anger. So, uh, yeah, you know, you need to... Music some, is healing. Some, I have said that before. Need, I believe that wholly, that music is a healing thing. You need some punk, some metal, some some. You blues. need just a little bit of a variety, you know. It doesn't have to be one genre. It can be, but, you know, mix it up, you know, depending on how you feel. Okay, it says, though, although 78 minutes seems to be the optimal amount of listening time, an average of just 11 minutes per day can deliver therapeutic benefits to, there you boost, go. to boost feelings of happiness. Just five minutes can do the trick. Right. So there are certain properties of music that affect the mind and body. Dedicating time each day to listening to music triggers different emotions uh, that can have hugely beneficial impact on our well-being. Listen, yes. Listening to happy songs increases blood flow to areas yes, of, the, the, of the brain associated with reward. Yes, uh, it does. So like an endorphin there. and a decrease- like, I get excited. Like, if I know I'm going to go see a live concert coming up or something, yeah. I start getting all excited. <laughs> you know, I start getting looking forward to it, going, oh, yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm going to party. I'm going to fucking dance. I'm going to sing. It's going to be awesome. Right. Hey, yeah. Awesome people. Yeah, I mean, it's great. Yeah. Uh, music also decreases flow to the amygdala, the part of the brain associated with fear. Uh, yes, there you go. As for rock music, 28% of respondents say the genre helps process feelings of anger, with ACDC's Highway to Hell being the top song choice for such a reaction. 18% of the people even claim to feel relaxed after just 16 minutes of rock and roll. Hell <laughs> yeah, baby. Hans, Hans. I'm uh, still rock. Like, don't think I've approved just because I'm like this bluegrass. No, I, bluegrass I, know, I know. I still I know. love me some rock and fucking roll. I grew up on the goddamn shit. I, I love Tom Petty, Led Zeppelin, ACDC. <laughs> Come on, dude. 
Now, now, like, I have no problem when it comes to music at all, ever. Like, like bluegrass is kind of my favorite thing that I like gravitated to, but trust me, that's not my only form of music that I love. Anyway, Hans Hans points yeah. out here that he believes that <laughs> oh, li- God. listening to music could lead to dancing. <laughs> What a fucking prude! No, no, that no. That is a prude. No, that he, is a prude. That's a prudish statement oh, to make. Come on, he's that just, is like he's a, just, like a let's let's go to fucking Whoville. Well, let's go to Grinchville. He's just and messing. live with Hans. He, let's all be Hans and live in Grinchville. Come on, he's just messing. He's just messing. <laughs> I know. So. <laughs> uh, and and uh, the Grinch. I'm going to start. That's my nick, new nickname for Hans now. Vin, Vinny, Vinny wants to listen to, to Oompa Loompa. Oh, that's that's oh, that's Van Meter. We're listening to <laughs> okay. Oompa, Oompa Loompa music, the tubas and the accordions. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I you know I grew up in northeast Minneapolis, northeast for the regulars, <laughs> for the and regulars. Um, polka was a huge thing for us. Yeah. In my neighborhood, seriously. We use <laughs> seriously. I know how to polka. Okay. I do. I, I know. It's 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 yeah. I do. I know. It's okay. One of them now, things. now I know that your you, the job you're working in is not your like perfect job, and some other job could be better for you. It's a job, you know. <laughs> I, I found a job for you. Okay. AmericanMarijuana.org. dot org. Okay. Cannabis product reviewer wanted. I know. I, that's a joke. That's a scam, dude. I'm telling you right now. It's, Smoke, a scam. it's not, though. Smoke weed and get paid up to $36,000 a year. No, not happening. Yes, no, it's true. It says, okay, I, I don't buy it. okay, that sounds sounds too good to be true. Exactly. So but, if something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. But wait, right. it's not, actually. Really? Who wrote this article? The, the people that are hiring. I want to interview them personally. Like, I want to call them up and say, is this a real thing? Okay, here it is. American... They'll be like, yeah, it's a real thing. Even though it's not, they'll be like, yeah, it's it, real. It is, it is. Like, no. American Marijuana is one of the most trusted medical marijuana resources online. Never heard of them before. And, I never heard of it. And we're looking for someone to review a wide variety of cannabis products to give their... This un- is a scam. It's no. not, it's not. They're just hiring one person, though, so... Okay, one person, yeah. right? Okay. Okay, uh, and and give their unbiased reviews and opinions of the product. So you're a product reviewer, basically. The best part, right? You get to work from the comfort of your own home. Your home, right? Interesting. Great. What we're looking for. The job is 100 percent for real and an important job that includes more than just getting paid to smoke weed. If you think that's the entire scope of the job, it oh, might, be then then, then might not be the job for you. We're looking for someone <laughs> to review a wide variety of cannabis products to give our readers an honest and reliable insights on various cannabis products. And uh, they have to live in a state in America or Canada where marijuana is, medical marijuana is legal. So, so five million people are going to apply for this job. So, so you might have <laughs> you, you might have to move. But, you know, yeah, it's kind of like the golden ticket in the Willy Wonka. The, the applicant will have to write about their honest reviews and opinions yes. of the product in the form of a blog. Moreover, they must be comfortable in front of a camera, since the job includes unboxing videos and explainer videos of how each cannabis product performs and differs from others. More notable products in the, uh, in the category. If you think you have the guts... To smoke weed every day, plays Snoop Dogg song, and <laughs> <laughs> and get, get paid. have the guts to smoke weed every day. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Apparently, that's a Snoop. oh my god, that's that, funny. That's the name of a Snoop Dogg song, and that's and funny. and get paid <laughs> and get paid doing it. You might just be the guy or girl we need, but do not expect us to hire you just because you can smoke. Because we're looking for a guy or a girl that also also has extensive knowledge of marijuana to educate our readers. That would be you. Um, uh, last, <laughs> la- la- right? Lastly, the applicant needs to be physically fit and healthy in general to carry out uh, cannabis product reviews regularly. Yeah, you're, that's you. So how does it work? Yes. How does it work? 
Every month, the lucky applicant will be shipped a box containing different brands and varieties of cannabis products. These products range from weed strains, vapes, edibles, to CBD oils. The applicant will then test the products in person and write about their experience with the product from unboxing to everything they'll be doing with the product. It also has to be noted that the applicant will be required to record their experience in film, although not really film digital, but, you know, they say film. Uh, <laughs> this includes an in-depth explanation of their experiences with the product during and after their use to educate readers and viewers on the effectiveness of the product. What will you get in return? Doing something you love. You will be paid up to $3,000 a month, uh, $36,000 a year in salary, uh, receive free cannabis products on a monthly basis. Yeah, but they're only hiring one person out of 8 billion people, or yeah. however many billion people are going to apply. I mean, not really a billion, but a lot of fucking other fucking people are going to apply. <laughs> this may not be for I'm everybody. I'm not even wasting my time. The, the, this may not be for everybody, but I bet you're <laughs> interested in this type of work. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to get wouldn't be? Who doesn't want to get paid doing what you love? Uh, right. <laughs> So anyway, if you think you're the person they need, um, there's uh, a, a thing here to fill out uh, in, in this article, the, the actual application, uh, telling, you know, basically. I still want to try. I still am leery. I don't trust it. Uh, I think it's bullshit. It's, no, it's true. It's real. Even though it's the fact that they say this is a real thing. It's that, real. That makes me, like, like, go, okay, this is not fucking real. And then they even say, <laughs> if something seems too good to be true. <laughs> um, yes, you know what? My rule of thumb is, if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. But it's true. That's my experience, though. <laughs> I don't believe it, Graham. Unless you fucking apply and prove it that it's real, well, I, I'm, I'm, see, I'm, 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 I'm saying it's bullshit. See, I, could, I couldn't do it uh, because I'm I, saying it's bullshit. I, I couldn't do it because I don't have a Facebook account. I'm yeah. calling it. I'm just saying yeah. no. And, and you bullshit. have to have a Facebook account. You know, They're just so. trying to get people to, like, Send in videos. Oh yeah, I smoke weed. I'll do it. I'll do it every day. Like, do you really want to send some stranger a fucking blog or a video talking about your marijuana use? You don't even know who these people are, really. They're a huge company. Uh, I've never even heard of them. All right. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm just skeptical. I'm just saying. All right. I'm skeptical. I understand. All right. Cool, <laughs> man. Yeah, some dumb bimbo. Who knows? Uh, yeah, yeah probably. You know, I just, I'm saying it's not a real thing. It, it is a real thing. It is. It is. I, uh, it is. Okay. Yeah. All right, what? Well, you know what? I heard it. We heard we did something on this. Hey, hey! It's like, it's like a year ago. It's, it's two it's, years ago. It's it's like they say about the lotto: if you don't play, you can't win. Right, but so if you don't send your resume in there or your fill out the little application, uh, there's not really a resume. I don't because it's. I like, just don't really trust it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't get it anyway. I'm too fucking old. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would be cool. I mean, yeah, sure. But you know what? After a while, I'd be like, I gotta do something else. Like, I can't just do this. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'd just get high every day and blog about it and <laughs> right, do little, you know, do, do little, walk do, around, do, do little videos. What, and, get I'm, high, I'm, go out in the street. Okay, uh, I'm going shopping now. Whatever, no, but for the... You know, the I'm driving now. You, you, you do the unboxing videos, you try out the products, you, you tell people your experiences with the product. I mean, it sounds great, you know. It does sound great, but... Well, you know, they have a lot of other people for uh, in other areas, you know, video no, games. I'm sure, I'm sure you got to get, like, mm -hmm. in on the ground floor and know somebody. No, you, you, you just fill out you the know, thing. No, you got to know somebody. <laughs> you just fill out the thing. <laughs> No, you know, people that, like, they, they play video games, they get all these video games. Oh, well, yeah. People pay them. I could see, I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying I, I you're understand helping, you're helping you know, how it You're helping them just, sell their products. You're, you're, right, you're, I get that. But you're, a, you're a customer. I live in Wisconsin, dude. You're so far removed from California, you know. It's just, like, <laughs> so far away. 
You know, it's just not the same in Wisconsin. Well, I, I, just, I understand. It's but. not. You don't live here. You. It's weird. It's weird. It's strange. Yeah. You know. <laughs> cyborg, <laughs> uh, cy, 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 cyborg Noodle just pasted a, a, a link to this uh, Tesla Cybertruck thing. In the, to, oh, I saw uh, that. A, a, yeah, I saw a, a watch. For, I'm like, you know, okay, that, that's an epic fail right there. That, that's the ugliest damn thing I ever saw. It, it, it looks like a freaking tank or something, yeah. a little mini tank or anyway, something. It's like, anyway, really? Anyway, okay. A, anyway, they, they did this test uh, earlier yeah, today. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, the blast it, it was supposed to be bulletproof. And they took this right. big metal ball and they threw it in there and it smashed all yeah. the glass out. Smashed and, it to hell. And uh, Musk, oh, yeah. Musk was like, oh, uh, yeah, that we, must have been too heavy of a ball. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> but, but whatever. I mean, who's gonna, that's, that's an ugly piece of crap. Who's going to buy that thing? Yeah. Uh, I mean, but but it, apparently it gets 500 uh, miles per charge, which is pretty good. And if you load it up with, uh, I think it's a two and a half tons. Uh, it'll haul or something like that. Wow. Uh, I mean, no, seven hundred. Right, I got a pegram. All right, all right. I'm gonna play some music then. Let's play some tunes. Uh, I gotta go. Make, make sure you party. Make, make sure make sure your speakers are turned up uh, so you can hear this first song. I will. I'll, I'll put it on speaker right now. All right. So this. All right. Uh, yeah. All righty. So here we go. Some music for y'all. This is a band known as Useful Jenkins. Ah, oh, yeah, very nice, very nice. Shredding Kenny Wayne Shepherd Band there with Voodoo Child, man. Ah, oh, it's a great version of that song, too. Uh, love it, love it, love it. All right, before that uh, was John Prine, and um, it was a song called Lonesome Friends of Science. It's a great song. I, I love the song. I also love the video there of that. And uh, let me share the, uh, the the link here in the chat, because you know, all who, who uh, haven't seen this over on the YouTube uh, it was a premiere type video, and and uh, along with it is a chat, the chat replay of from the premiere. John Prine is actually chatting in the chat, the, telling you about uh, some of the stuff going on uh, as, as his uh, production of that song. And John Prine, he's a really cool guy, man. So uh, I think I'll uh, go ahead and embed that song into the uh, uh, in, in, into into the blog post. But uh, you you should all you should all. Um, What's going on here? How come I'm not getting this here? Why am I not getting? Oh this? hell yeah! There it is. Uh, it, it, because um, uh, you, you should it, those of you who haven't seen it on the YouTube, you should uh, watch the video on YouTube. And, yes. And, and and check out John Prine's chat there because um, <laughs> it's, it's just freaking awesome. That's all. Yeah. And, anyway, so yeah, and I love the lyrics, man. Uh, the lonesome friends of science say the world could end most any day. And if it does, that's okay, because I don't live here anyway. Wow, <laughs> right up to your alley, girl. I know. Anyway, we kicked it <laughs> off. We kicked it off there with Useful Jenkins doing a song called "Waiting to Die," which is great stuff as well. Uh, yes, and they, definitely. They, they, I'm they, going to a festival during the winter at a hotel, and they're doing two sets. Oh yeah, cool. So yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I know a lot of them. I know them personally, so it's gonna it's gonna be like just like a big party at a hotel with all my friends. Yeah, but yeah. also play, play awesome music. So sweet. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! That's great. <laughs> and so my deal is is like you don't. They say you don't. Well, you only live once a lifetime. Once a lifetime. Once once yep. per once per meat suit. Once per lifetime. So. You have to, like, do shit. You can't fucking... I mean, you can do whatever you want, but... I mean... People, like, give me... Don't give me crap, but think... Think what they think about me and my music thing, right? Right. And it's like, you know what? It's my thing. It's like in music. How is that wrong? How is that a bad thing? I, like, they don't even say it's a bad thing, but they're just not, like, as into it as me. Right. Like, I go to a lot of live music. Okay. Duh. Okay. Okay. Right. But just like that article that you read earlier about the music, he it keeps me young, dude. It keeps me moving. It keeps me active. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like I'm not a couch potato, dude. Like that would be boring as hell to me. 
being a couch potato would be the most boring. I couldn't do it. I, I just couldn't. Physically, I could not do it. I just could well, not sit on a well, couch for hours, at, you know. Would you be like uh, couch potato chips, couch french fries, couch mashed potato? I would potato, be couch not on it. Cou- like, couch mashed potato. I would potato. not be on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> couch baked potato. You know, you'd be a couch baked potato. <laughs> yeah, I'd be hot. Hot. Baked potatoes are hot. Oh, you can only you know hang on for so long. You can only sit in one place for so long. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So. <laughs> you ever play that game as a kid, though? Hot potato. Yeah. Sure, everybody played that. Remember, remember that game? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So there's young ones in here. They have no idea what the fuck we're talking about right now. No, if, if they can't play it, hot the... potato. Yeah, they don't. They're like, what the fuck are they talking about you know, right if, now? If they if they can't if they can't play it on their uh, on their iPad or whatever, then you know. Right. You gotta remember, Grim and I are over the hill. <laughs> yeah, we're over fifty. All right. So shit we did when we were kids is fifty years ago. Fifty plus years ago. <laughs> almost sixty. And you guys have no clue. What? Uh, almost sixty years ago. Okay, so I overheard a conversation at work. And one person said that the first movie they ever saw was a remake of something they're doing. I can't remember. But then the other person said their first movie that they ever went to do a theater was Back to the Future. And I'm like, (laughs) holy shit! I felt so old just for a second. I looked it up. 1985, the year I graduated high school. I'm like, okay, I'm officially fucking old now. Yes, you are. If Back to the Future is this guy's first movie that he went to, I'm like, oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, I know somebody whose first movie they went to in a theater is Back to the Future. I'm like, oh my god. Well, let's let's just say... Knock on wood, I'm knocking on wood right now. What now? Well... To say when when I was a kid, one yes. of the one of the movies I went and saw was the uh, was it Swiss Family Robinson. Yes, I remember that movie. It's a Disney yeah. movie. Yeah, that was a, 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 that was a good movie. I the, remember that movie too. At, at, I do. At the premiere show, you know when it, when it first was released. Yeah. So that that's how old I am. And they, you know what? I I kind of <laughs> wanted to be the Swiss Family Robinson. I wanted to live on an island and have some hut up in the sky and the trees and shit. Yeah, they had all those, like, You know, I wanted to be all that. I was all about that shit. I was like, yeah, man, Swiss Family Robinson, yeah. They had all those pulleys and things to bring stuff up. Yeah, they did. They had all that cool shit going on. And the monkeys. You know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that was a good movie. So, I don't know what... If you've never seen that movie, you guys should see that movie. I I don't know what year... Because even... What? I don't know what year that movie came out, but... I don't either, but back in the day, the special effects weren't like they are now, but yeah. they actually did a pretty good job on that one. But I, I you saw, know you I mean? know, those movies, like yeah. when the, with the, the computer that wore tennis shoes. Uh, yes, the, oh yeah, oh, the Shaky Dog. It was Kurt Russell, yeah. Remember, yeah, the with, Kurt Russell, uh, 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 huge, he grew up, and he was a kid actor. Yeah, he, he was, was a, a kid. He, he was a little kid. He was a, he he was was a fucking anti. man in the Mickey Mouse Club, dude. <laughs> Say goodnight to Anti. Good night, Anti. Thank you. Sleep okay. well. <laughs> Don't let the bed bugs bite. So, yeah, Flubber. You remember Flubber? Oh, God, that's Robin Williams. No, the old one. No, oh, yes, the old one with Kurt Russell. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I remember all those, dude. All of those ones. Not I remember Robin all of those movies. movies. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's crazy. <laughs> that's insane how old we are, dude. The Parent Trap. Yeah, I saw that, too. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, remember um, Apple Dumpling Gang? I don't. What fucking, um, uh, the guy from Mayberry. Don Knotts. Oh, okay. Yeah, Don Knotts. The Apple, that was a Disney thing. Mayberry. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Maybe, what do they call it? What do they call him? Little, uh, what's that guy's name? The, the kid. Opie? What was what? it? It's, uh, who, Opie. Who played Opie? Uh, Andy Griffin, or no, Ron Howard. Ron Howard, yeah. They they announce him as Little Ronnie Howard. Yeah, Little Ronnie Howard. Now he's like this big time Hollywood <laughs> producer or whatever, but... Yeah, well, I mean, that was forever ago, so... He yeah. did Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Pretty sure. I don't know. Tom Hanks was in that, right? Yep. No. Uh, Matt Damon. 
Yeah, Tom Hanks. Yeah, Tom Hanks was in that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but in the in the in the in the, in the yeah the the, the uh, what was that show called? Mayberry? What not Mayberry? Um, Andy, uh, Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith show. Yeah, they they announced uh, Andy Griffith is Andy Griffith and little right. Ronnie Howard is Opie. Little Ronnie Howard is Opie. <laughs> right, I I noticed that when I yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don Knotts and his bullet in his pocket. Don Knotts was hilarious, yeah, he dude. His, he he his... was really fucking funny. Like he was like, um, he could be, like when he was in the uh, Andy Griffith show. Yeah. When he used to do the fucking crying thing, that was funny. Like he was a physical com- comedian. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. He used his body just a lot like Robin Williams did. Sure. You know, Robin yeah. Williams was the same way, but, um, yeah, really, Don Knotts was very talented. He was a very funny dude. Yeah. He was He was great. He was a good actor because he could play that role so well, the role of the fucking dork or whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. He, like, he, he was like the dork, you know, and he was like, you know. Yeah, he wanted, he wanted to be this big badass cop and... And right, it, yeah, it, he he he's he's so funny. It, like, it, he, he even did guest roles on like the Lucille Ball show. He was in a lot of Disney movies, like for kids. Yeah. He was a great guy too. Wasn't he, he did, like, like he? Wasn't he? He uh, wasn't one of these scandal, you know, ridden. You know, like, like he may have had problems with alcohol what, 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 or something, but they, he, he he lived a pretty clean Hollywood existence. What, what, you know what I mean? He was just an actor. He he liked to do it. You know, what, you could tell. What wasn't he, Mister Lumpet? In what show? It was that, like a movie with like he was like a fish guy, move, Mr. Limpet. Probably that's might be before my time a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You're, it was, it you're was, a little bit older than me, Grim. Just saying. It's one, it's one of those Disney films. Yeah. Oh yeah, he played in a lot of Disney films. So it probably was him. Yeah. Kurt Russell grew up. He was a kid actor. He started. He was like four or five or something. You know. And then yeah. he was in all those. The Shaggy Dog, or no, there was another guy too. That tall, dark-haired dude. Um, the guy that played in the Shaggy, D- the, like, the guy that owned the dog and stuff. I don't, I don't remember. But anyway, I can't think of his name, but yeah. doesn't matter. But yeah, no Disney. Even though now I know that they're totally fucking evil. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, <laughs> they come across as they're not being evil, but they're evil. They're part of the thing. They're part of the glob. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Barney Fife. Thank you, Vinny. That was his name, Barney Fife. Right, the Barney. Andy Griffith show. Yeah. Ampy. <laughs> Barney Fife. He was funny though. He was so funny. I was bummed when he died, actually, because he was really funny. Yeah. Yeah, he did some guest spots on Three's Company when he was older. You bet, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, he kept and, acting until he was in his older age. Yeah, he kept acting because people wanted him. He was funny, dude. And I, I guess he was I, good at what he did. I, I guess Andy Griffith's dead now too. Yeah, he's been dead. Okay. All right. And of course, Aunt B's dead. So. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> if she was alive. She'd be a Borg or something. I yeah, I mean, she she was old in the in the in the show, so. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Ronnie Howard's older than me, so yeah, and he's older. he's about the same age as you, actually. Uh, it's it's got to be older than me. Yeah, he might be a little bit. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Let's just see here. Yeah, look <laughs> it up. Uh, yeah, I, so it, it it's freaky. It's like when you get to a certain age. And you still have your like yeah. memories, like you think back, and you have like these flashbacks. It's really weird. Yeah, he's like it's like really weird. Like you have these flashbacks. I mean, it's crazy. Like certain smells or certain he's things like, will trigger a memory. It's just like really weird. He's he's like six years older than me. Oh, okay, all right. Wow. Right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. He's Betty getting up Lou. there then. Not getting up there. Actually, in the sixties is not old. Sure it is. <laughs> it ain't young. <laughs> no, it's not. Like once you pass that fifty mark, it's kind of like okay, fucking Christ! I've been here for over fifty years. <laughs> you're like holy shit. Uh, yeah. You knock on wood. You're like okay, well. Yeah. 
You know? <laughs> Another 50 to go. Uh, right. No, I'm not going to limp to 100. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Jim's all like, no, I'm not going 50 longer. No, I'm not. That's I'm not. That, like, that, I want to die at 80. Like, uh, yeah, no. 100 years, is that's too old. That's that crazy. is too old, that's, dude. That's, I don't want to be all fucking bedridden and just like, you know, I'd be like, end me now. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, put a pillow over my head. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, once once you can't really move around. Once you or, can't do anything. Right. Yeah, it's like, it's, what's it's, the point, you know? Just, just. Excellent. That's Stay like back. I need a DNR because I don't want if I'm I don't want life saving measures if I'm you know because I don't want to be a vegetable that's living in a bed the right you know what I mean that is not a life trust me it's not you know yeah, yeah what's you like decrepit you know what the hell right it's like what's the fucking point right you know just take me home so I can start over again or <laughs> something you know what I mean. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's quite a bit older than you, Graham. Yeah, 65, so... Wow! Wow! Yeah. His his daughter's an actress. You knew that, right? No. Bryce Howard. I don't know who that is. Yeah, she's a redhead. She's really pretty. She's an actress. She's a good actress. Well, I would assume being Ron Howard's kid, she's right, a redhead. Right, exactly. <laughs> she's a very good actress. She's been around Hollywood for a while. Yeah, she'd, so. she'd definitely be a redhead being his kid. Yeah, he. She's a redhead. She's beautiful. She's really pretty. Yep. Mm, okay. But um, he. It, it's just weird because he was fucking Opie, and then he was fucking Happy Days. Right. And Happy again, days. Uh, what was his name in Happy Days? Uh, Richie. Richie Cunningham. Richie. Richie Cunningham. And then you know, <laughs> I mean, that wasn't when I was like in sixth grade, dude. Like, yeah. when I watched Andy Griffith's show, it was repeats. It was black and white. It was like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Sure. It wasn't while they aired. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, by the time I was that, I was in sixth grade when Happy Days came out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fifth or sixth grade, something like that. And I had a Fonzie shirt, and that was my favorite fucking shirt. Hey. My mom would make me take it off and change it. She's like, I have to wash that shirt. <laughs> Be like, no! <laughs> She's like, you're not wa- wearing that shirt one more day without it being washed. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Hey, I take offense to that, Prince. Because, you know, I have some red hair, red, naturally red hair. I'm an auburn. My hair is auburn. My hair is not no brown. It's auburn. So, yeah. And you're true. It's true. Redheads are, you know, redheads. They're fire, fiery. Fire, fiery women. Fire horse women. But, you know, and they're fiery. <laughs> and you got to just know how to handle them. Yeah. You know, you got to know how to deal. You know? <laughs> yeah, Vinny, I like, so anyway. I, like, I, I like redheads, blondes, brunettes, mostly brunettes. They're beautiful. Most, mostly Red hair is beautiful. The, the brunettes I like, yeah. So, but Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, I have a big story to cover, but we'll yeah, do it after. Yeah, my one friend. No, okay, let's do it. Well, no, we'll do, I'll do it after the next music thing here. Oh, we're doing a music stuff? Okay. Yeah, because it's a big you story. Do you want to do it? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, it, what? What were you saying? I just said, Never I'll, mind. I'll do the story after the next music break. Okay. It's, it's a big story. Yes, I agree, Prince. Henry Winkler, I love him. I loved him. I was a huge fan of the Fonz. Like, he was like an idol to me. Like, he was so cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> I loved that. <laughs> oh, no, you can't be just joking now. Way to burst my bubble, dude. <laughs> Way to go, Prince. Thanks a lot. Like, I seriously had a total crush. I was in sixth grade, buddy. Okay, come on now. Yeah, yeah. I was in sixth grade. Okay, so there you go. All right, let's play this music. We'll be back. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. All right, enjoy, folks. <laughs> Ah, 
by uh, the uh, Heima, Heimat Damist, I guess. I'm doing Highway to Hell there. A little uh, polka version of Highway to Hell. Uh, before that, Shaw Davis and the Black Ties doing a track called Peace in Mississippi uh, back on October 23rd there in Hollywood Beach, Florida. Shaw Davis and the Black Ties. Remember that name. Good stuff. And we kicked it off with Billy Strings in Seven Bridges Road uh, for the Mata Moose Girl. Great stuff, great stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Hans, oh. <laughs> yes, thank you. That was a funny song, that last one. That was hilarious. Yeah. I yeah. liked it. I liked it. It was polka. <laughs> and Hans will be like, oh, polka's from Poland? Uh, no, not just from Poland, buddy. Sorry to burst your bubble, but try again next time. <laughs> Oompa Loompa. Yeah, Oompa Loompa. It's that tuba. That's what makes it Oompa Loompa. Yeah, I guess that. So. It's a tuba sound. <laughs> <laughs> yep, German. It was German, but it was polka style, dude. I'm a dumbest. All right. <laughs> Okay. There's not much between German music and Polish music. Trust me on that one. There's not well, much difference at all. There's no difference. Especially since Germany invaded Poland, but yeah. Well, yeah, I know, but... <laughs> the same area of the country, of the, the world. Right, East German, or East uh, Europe, European. Eastern European, yep. Yeah. All right, here's the No, that's story. Gesundheit. Gesundheit is a German word. He's being funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> he tries. Oh, okay, but... here's the story. He forgets that you can't. Oh, I'm sorry, Grim. He forgets that you can't detect sarcasm from just mere seeing words. Like, oh, but okay, okay, go ahead. I, I can. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I, sometimes I can, yeah. but not always. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, this is a story, and I've talked about this story before, but this is a. Uh, more recent article, I do believe, and either way, it just popped up on Minds today, and and so I, I said I, I got to share this again because to me it's to me it's very important, uh, and it should be to you as well, and and it well here it is. This is posted on Forbes dot com if you can imagine. Because, I imagine that. Yeah, I know, man. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> scientists resume efforts. To create deadly flu virus. Oh God! With go. the United States government's blessing. Of course. Of course. So here it is. For more than a decade now, two scientists, one in the U.S. and one in the Netherlands, have been trying to create a deadly human pathogen from avian influenza. That's right. They are trying to turn bird flu, which does not normally affect people, into a human flu. Not surprisingly, many scientists are vehemently opposed to this. In mid-2014, a group of them formed the Cambridge Working Group and issued a statement warning of the dangers of this research. The statement was signed by hundreds of scientists at virtually every major United States states and European university. In, in response to these and other concerns, in October 2014, the United States government called for a pause in this dangerous research. NIH director Francis Collins said that his agency would study the risks and benefits before proceeding further. Well, four years later, the risks and benefits have not changed, but the NIH has quietly allowed the research to start again, as we learned last week in an exclusive report from Science's Jocelyn Kaiser. I can't allow this to go unchallenged. This research is so potentially harmful and offers such little benefit to society that I fear the NIH is endangering the trust that Congress places in it. And don't misinterpret me. I'm a huge supporter of NIH, and I've argued before that it's one of the best investments the American public can make. But this one's really, they got this one really, really wrong. Double really. 
For those who might not know, the 1918 influenza pandemic, which killed between 50 and 100 million people worldwide, 3% of the entire world population at the time, was caused by a strain of avian influenza that made the jump into humans. The 1918 flu was so deadly that it killed more American soldiers and sailors during World War I than did enemy weapons. Not surprisingly, when other scientists, including the person that wrote this, learned about the efforts to turn bird flu into a human flu, we asked, why the heck would anyone do that? The answers were, and, right. and, and, and still are, unsatisfactory. But, <laughs> no kidding! Claims such as, we'll learn more about pandemic potential of the flu, and we'll be better prepared for an avian flu pandemic if one occurs. These, these are hand-waving arguments that may sound reasonable, but they promise only vague benefits while ignoring the dangers of this research. If the research succeeds in one of the newly designed, highly virulent, virulent uh, flu strains escapes, the damage could be horrific. Yeah, you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, hello, brainiacs, motherfucking bitches. Hello, dumbasses. Yeah, you're scientists or whatever the fuck you are, but exactly. you're stupid. One, one of the you're deadly... with this shit. Exactly. One of There's the... a reason for it. They've been told to do it. Oh, absolutely. They've been hired by somebody to fucking do it. No, no doubt about it. One of the deadliest stra oh. strains of avian flu circulating today is H5N1. This yeah, fuck, I hate their numbers. I hate... Uh, how are we supposed... To, the general public is supposed to know what H5N1 yeah, means. Nothing, it's like, yeah. it's just fucking stupid. Like, call... Make up a name for it. But they don't want to do hype, so the HGN1. Like, to make it sound like it's all scientific and scary. It's like, it's a goddamn flu. Wash well, your goddamn hands no, no, and keep it's, hydrated. Okay, what well... It, it is scary because this yeah. str this strain has occasionally jumped from birds to humans with a mortality rate approaching really? 50%. 50 percent, fifty percent, God, far more deadly than any human flu. Where is this article from again? Forbes. Yeah, see, there you go. Fortunately, the virus has never been... Fear factor. Uh, well, this, this, this is what they're doing. This is what these scientists are doing. Uh, yeah, they're messing with this shit. They've been messing with this shit forever. They've been trying to... That's why they come... They have to decide what strain of flu they're going to come out with. Right. What, well... You know, to vac vaccinate against. And then, you know, and then they they come out with this vaccine, a flu shot, and they're like, oh, get the flu shot. And then they come out with a story two weeks later saying, oh, it's not um, effective against all forms of flu. Right. Well... So, basically, it's worthless. Anyway, you know, it says, uh, fortunately, the H5N1 virus has never gained the ability to, be, give ability to be transmitted directly between humans. That is, it didn't have this ability until two scientists, Ron Fauchier in Netherlands and Yoshiko Karakawa at the University of Wisconsin, thank you very much, Wisconsin, engineered it to gain this ability. Actually, yeah, don't you have to think. Put salt in the wound, Graham. Like, come on now. <laughs> Actually, their work showed that the virus could be trans <laughs> transmitted between ferrets, not humans, for the obvious reason that you can't ethically test this on humans. No. Right. Anyway, Fortier and Kawoka are back at it again. NIH lifted the pause in December right. 2017, the invited they and invited scientists to submit proposals for this type, type of research. Fauciere com that word. Uh, Fauciere, I don't know how you say his name, but he's whatever. Confidently stated at the time that all he had to do was to find and replace a few terms in his previous proposal, and it would likely sail through a peer review. It appears he was correct, although, according to the science article. His study has been, had been approved, but not yet actually funded. Kawaka's project is already underway, as anyone can learn by checking the NIH grants database. And by the way, why the heck is the United States funding agency supporting research in the Netherlands anyway? <laughs> right. What the, yeah, so here we go. 
there's no collusion. It's like, fuck you. If, There's fucking collusion, and we all fucking know it. If Foutier's work is so great, and it isn't, let the, no. Nether let the Netherlands fund it. As, right. the, as this author has... <laughs> as this author said uh, before, more than once, engineering the flu to be more virulent is a terrible idea. No it, shit! Sure what? <laughs> It, no shit, Sherlock. It, it appears that. If it ain't we, broke, don't fix it, bitch! If, if it ain't break, let's break what the it further. Oh, fuck! Uh, it, it appears the review process at NIH simply failed. As multiple scientists stated to Vox last week, this research has the potential to cause millions of deaths. No shit! <laughs> Fauci. It's, Fauci. Like, it's like Mangula revisited. Uh, I'm telling you, this, this is. Fauci and Kawaka and their defenders, usually other flu scientists who also benefit from the same funding, like to claim that their project to engineer a deadlier bird flu will somehow prevent future pandemic. This argument is, frankly, nonsense. Influenza mutates while circulating among millions of birds, and no one has any idea how to predict or control that process. Uh, the author says he should mention that he knows a little bit about flu, having published multiple papers on it, including the paper in Nature and another one on the H5N1. Oh, my God. Anyway, Fauci and Kawakoka. Kawawa. All right, you're pissing me off. No, no, This is pissing me. This article is, like, totally pissing me off. All right, right well, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay. <laughs> Fauci and Kawakaka have also argued that we could use their work to stockpiles of vaccines in advance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We don't even stockpile vaccines for the normal su seasonal flu because it mutates too fast. Oh, my God. So, this so, is insane. So we have to produce new vaccines each year. And the notion that anyone can predict a future pandemic strain so precisely that we could design a vaccine based on their prediction is laughable. I can't, right. It's laughable. Correct. I, I can't quite fathom why the NIH seems to be so enraptured with the work of, two, of these two labs that right. ra rather than simply deny them the funding, it has ignored the warnings uh -oh. of... It has ignored, yeah. ignored the warnings of hundreds of scientists and now creates, uh, risks creating a new influenza pandemic. As much as this author hates to say this, maybe it's time for Congress to intervene. Uh, the guy was... No! Uh, no! Uh, they won't do nothing. No. Uh, anyway, the, the author is... There's uh, so many backdoor deals, you can't fucking... That's not the route, buddy. Anyway, no. the, the author's uh, name is Steven Salzberg. Uh, he's the Bloomberg Distinguished Professor of Biomedical Engineering and Computer Science in Biostatistics at John Hopkins. Uh, and he is absolutely definitely against what these guys are doing, as you can tell from the article. Good. Uh, yeah. And, and the fact that this is uh, being done with your tax dollars. Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Okay, so that, are you done with this one? Yeah, yeah, that's it, man. I... I, 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 what, 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 because you brought that up that it's be, supposedly our quote unquote tax dollars quote yeah. unquote are being used quote unquote for such purposes quote unquote. And so if this doesn't prove to you that the fiat system is fucked up and fake and the money, so called money that you're supposedly earning quote unquote right. is bullshit. It's all bullshit. So my point was going to be, if you can work outside of this system somehow, please do it. Like, barter and trade with people. Have a garage sale. You know, I don't fucking know. But anything you can do to not depend on the system. Right. You have to use barter and trade. Sure. That's the only way to make it work. If you you're can, not uh, using the fiat currency. Yeah, well, as much as you can, you should use barter yes. and trade. Um, and, and that includes anything anything outside of the the, the, the Federal Reserve the norm, System. The Federal right. Reserve uh, is, is a good idea. 
so anything outside of that Federal Reserve is a good idea. Uh, wh- whatever that may right. be. However, it's not largely possible. Like, let's say, okay, for instance, we were just talking, I was just talking to some people tonight for at dinner, and there's a guy that, it, his, his business is called Hometown Repair, and he works right out of his house. And he happens to live, like, right off a of main drain. Like, you can see his house from this main drag, right? Right. And in the summertime, he's got lawnmowers lined up out there. He's got a sign out there on his garage that says Hometown Repair, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's got lawnmowers lined up out there. You know, so if you want, you can bring your lawnmower there and get it repaired, or he'll buy it from you and give you one that really works, right? Yeah. So he's he's been here for 30 years, dude. He's been doing this for thirty plus years, right? Okay, great. And he's a, he, he he's the word of mouth around town, and that's who you want. That's the shop you want to go to is the best shop in town, right? Sure, sure. Via word of mouth, okay? Yeah. And so, um, in the winter, he does the opposite. He he does the same thing with snow blowers, right? Right. And so, what I'm saying is. If if you didn't have money to pay, look, let's say it was a different circumstance, but when we're talking about barter and trade, like you provide a service, they provide a service. Like you, no money has to be, no fiat currency has to be exchanged necessarily, right? Right. Like let's say he needs something painted or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you, so you paint his garage and he fixes your goddamn lawnmower or snowblower, right? Right. So it used to be done, though. I mean, yeah, sure, people used to use the fiat currency because it was there, but back in the day, they also did the barter and trade stuff still until, like, probably, like, the 60s. You yeah. know what I mean? Sure, sure. So then the 60s, they just started doing all this funky shit with the numbers and started fucking manipulating all this shit. And they started using computers and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? To manipulate the fucking fiat currency numbers and everything. So that's how they got us, like, caught in this fucking trap, dude. This money trap. I'll I'll call it money trap for lack of a better term, but this whole fiat currency fucking scam. Right. All which... We've become... Okay, people... Across, over the across the planet, unless you live in a third world world country, maybe okay, your world is run. Your fi- your finances and shit, your money, quote unquote, is run via computers. All right, sure. I mean that paper money that you get when you re- get cash at the ATM. Yeah, it's not really real. I mean, it's paper, dude. Think about it. It's no. paper. Right. Okay. Right. It's fucking paper! <laughs> okay? The, the problem is not really that it's paper. It's the, the fact that it's... And it's fake that, numbers the, in the, a the, computer, the, right? Fa- the fact that it's paper backed by nothing. It, it's, right, backed by air. It, it, it's backed by what they call the full faith and credit of the United States. Right. Which is it's nonsense. It's a promissory note. Well, which is nonsense because it's not backed by the United right. States. Right. Be, and it, it makes no it's, because it's the not, U.S. is in debt. It's not United okay. States. It's not United States money. It's Federal Reserve That's, debt. Debt notes. And they keep telling you. But here's the every thing. other month that the U.S. is in debt, and the economy's this, and the economy's that. You know. But, but and it, you, it's obvious it's being manipulated. But but here's like the, if you don't believe all the political shit, look into how the fucking money system is run, and tell me it's not being manipulated. All right. But, but here's it's the, like the politics is. Here, here's, the ahead, thing, here's, here's the thing, Moose. The more barter and trade you can do and stay at, staying outside of the Federal Reserve right. system as much as you can was, yep. is great. But in the large part, you can't do that. You can't, no, you, you can't. You, you can't well, that's what I'm saying. It's such a way that we're in a trap. You can't, you can't pay your bills. You can't. Go right, the, you can't the, get by because they, yeah, you can't make it happen that way. You, can't, you, you can't have pay, to work. Yep. Yeah, you can't pay your mortgage. You can't. Right. You, 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 need, they, you don't make enough fast enough or whatever. Yep. Right. Even if you uh, say, okay, well, I, I, I'm going to do everything with crypto, you can 
up to the right. point up to the point where you actually need to actually pay somebody because yeah, they and turn it into cash or because, yeah because they they you have to convert it the federal reserve right. system crap and and, and that's what they'll take uh, if you can find we're in a trap that's you know, what i'm saying if you could find somebody saying i'll i'll take you know 100 bitcoins for this house or whatever um right and you can give them 100 bitcoins, that's good. That's all good and fine. Okay, uh, so what we can do, Graham, is we can, even though we have to use this fucking shit cash paper money, right? Back by nothing, right? You still hire people that are, aren't corporate. You hire the local guy that does the auto repair, the local guy that does the snow right. plowing. Like I said, as you, much as you, possible. You support the mom and pop businesses as much as you can, the local people that are businesses that are privately owned so we can you know at least support them instead of this fucking whole machine you know what i mean sure sure yeah that's that's some way to combat it i mean you know what i mean it's a big battle we're not you know what i mean the war is going on it's been going on for a long time you you just have to pick your battles you know what i'm saying sure because you know people people are pissed though i wish more people were more pissed most people don't, don't they they don't even know and if they did know they wouldn't exactly. care. They just yep. wouldn't care. As long as they can, you know, get their iPods or whatever the hell they get. Right. And the, then their the comforts, thing? get their groceries <laughs> and get their fucking shit. Yeah. Yeah. We've they, said it before. It, the revolution will only happen when people become uncomfortable. Exactly. Like people are like, Well, why would you want the economy to collapse? It's because like because it's time to get fucking real. Right. <laughs> this shit we got going on is not fucking real. It's all made up. All these numbers, this economy system is based on fake shit. Oh yeah, a made up system. It's not a. It's it's and like you said. It's backed by nothing. It used to be backed by silver and gold. Now it's backed by nothing. And you can hear all these these idiot talking heads uh, spouting every day how the economy is roaring because they're looking at the stock market and the stock market is hitting. New high records every single day. I mean, right? Not, yeah. Blah blah blah. Yeah. No. I, I'm it's seriously new high numbers on 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 yeah, Wall Street every day. It's all manipulation. Yeah. It means nothing. It means it, nothing. It means nothing. The stock market means shit. <laughs> so. It means nothing because it's all manipulated. It's all fake. It's all based on fucking shit. Yeah. Made up data. Yeah. You know, just made up stuff. Right. And if that doesn't make you think, I don't know what what to tell you. But you know, if you're a critical thinker, or you want to be, do it and keep doing it. You know, keep critically thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Please, because we well, obviously the world does not have enough of those people right now. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about this. Okay. This should make you smile. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> From the mind unleashed. Mm-hmm. Bill to legalize marijuana nationwide and end prohibition passes key committee in historic vote. The, okay. sta- the stage is now set for a full floor vote. Wow. So, it won't pass, so. Well, I will see. Anyway, for the first time in U.S. history, a key congressional committee has approved a bill that would comprehensively put an end to federal prohibition of marijuana. On Wednesday, the House Judiciary Committee passed H.R. 3884, the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expunge. Why do they got to make it all this big, drawn-out name? Because they wanted to get the acronym of... They yeah, want, they, yeah want, they, they, they wanted the acronym MORE. The drama. The more, drama. The acronym MORE. It's the MORE Act. Mar- right. Oh, yeah. Mar- drama. Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement MORE Act by a 24 to 10 vote, clearing the way for a full vote on the floor of the House of Representatives. The GOP efforts to stall the bill with additional hearings largely failed as two Republicans, Tom McClintock and Matt Gatz, sided with Democrats who argued that the debate has gone on too long while the enforcement of cannabis prohibition uh, continues to damage communities placed in the crosshairs of the failed war on drugs. Yes, no shit. McClintock said, 
I don't sing the praises of marijuana. I simply recognize the limitations of our laws and also the limits of my ability to try and run everybody's lives for them. Thanks, buddy. And here's my, my, my key lined up or highlighted part. The Moore Act, introduced by Chairman Gerald Nadler, uh, would lead to the removal of cannabis from the Controlled Substances Act. Okay. Removed from the Controlled Substances Act. No longer would marijuana be a controlled substance. Okay. Ending prohibition on a national level and allowing states to move forward with their own policies regulating the commerce and consumption of the I plant. I suppose that's good. That's what I said. It's, yeah, it's kind of good. We'll, we'll see what goes on with it. But, right. uh, you know, it's 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 better than it is. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah, that's true. It's getting, better than it was. Get, getting it off of that control. Removing it from that controlled substances uh, list, then I, I, that, 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 that's a huge thing in, in my view. Uh, on that, um, will it actually change anything? Will it actually pass? Uh, not only does it have to get through the whole house, then it would have to get through the Senate, and then it would have to not be vetoed by the right. Pre- by it's going to drag on and drag president. on. It'll be years before you know. Could be years. Well, yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll see. Nothing ever happens fast, you know. Yeah. When they want to put a law on you, it happens quickly. But when you want to try to take one off, oh, my God, it takes forever. It's like, really? Okay. Well, anyway. They're the, assholes. They're assholes. The, 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 the whole thing the whole thing to me was if you can get this off of the controlled substances list. Right. That, that would be a good thing. No, it would be a start. That's it's, major. That's major. Um, it is. I agree. Yeah. So. I agree. Yeah. I mean, uh, it... it Okay. I know. I you know, legalized sucks, but yep. um, but well, we've talked about that so much on here. I know we, it, we discussed it, that before. But it's certainly better than being illegal, being throwing people in jail exactly. for yes. years, and, and, and then people that are in jail for any weed offenses should be released immediately. Then, upon its passing, I I would say if so. It does but happen. I would say so then, but that yes. Uh, Fuckers out of there. That, that again, that'll be up to the states as well. So. And I don't mean to call them fuckers, because they're not. You know, nonviolent offenses. Yeah, well, they you are. Know, such as weed peddling or having it possession. It's bullshit, right? You yeah. know. Yeah. All right, we're gonna play some more music here. All right, let's do that. This is a chick set. <laughs> Woohoo! I like. Well, I'm a chick, so. You know. <laughs> All right, the first. This well, one. that's a that's a slang term, actually, but you know, chick, yeah. I like it. I, you know, they yeah. call them chick on happy days, don't they? I don't know. They call girls chicks on happy days, I think. Sure, why not? Or maybe I'm through somebody. I don't know. I don't know either. All right, anyway. No, no, no I think. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, this first song, it's a good anti-war song, Cobra and the Lotus. Nice. Here it is. Oh, yeah. That's some smoking stuff right there, let me tell you. <laughs> Cobra and the Lotus covering a lot of Miles' black velvet and doing a fantastic job of it. But before that, Samantha Fish with chills and fever. And we kicked it off with Cobra and the Lotus and Soldier. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, some sexy stuff, man, let me tell you. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> what'd you think Moose those hot songs or what Moose girl Moose girl Moose girl hello 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 Moose girl Moose girl am I talking to myself I guess I am I don't know <laughs> what's going on <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> I don't mind talking to myself. <laughs> Just surprised uh, by it by, uh, sometimes. So, anyway. Yeah, it was like a uh, Cobra Sammy sandwich there for you all. What now? What now? What now? Did she go away? 
she wandered off. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's all right. Off. Off. <laughs> all right. Oh, man. What do we got here? Let's see here. We got... Oh, it's seven. Hello? There she is. Sorry. Right. I got a call. My son called me. You know, I can't control these things. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's fine. Sorry about that. That's all right. That's all right. So, uh, good. So, how's he doing? All right, I guess. Oh, okay. I don't know why he's calling me at this time. I answered the phone. I'm like, why are you calling me at this time? You know? Yeah, why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm at a party. I don't do anything dumb. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I wanted to post this up uh, for anybody that might want it. It's uh, that's not really a, a story for me to tell y'all, but it, it's just a, uh, a downloadable PDF that you can download. It's 100 and odd pages. Uh, Stories of Norse Gods and Heroes. Um so uh, it's just something for you to download, check out, uh, you know, read, get some info on, such things like that. And it's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, you know, whatever. It's, it's uh, you know, maybe not 100% accurate to the Eddas, but that's all right. Um, it, it, it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of, it's got a, got a lot of good chapters in there um, uh, on various uh, Norse gods, uh, Balder, Fenrir, uh, Loki, Thor, uh, cool. Yeah, all kinds of various stuff. Um, so just check it out and see what you think if if you should so desire. Uh, I'll put the link also into the blog so you can get it from there if you don't get it here tonight. So, yeah. All right. Oh, you may remember some years back the United States of America. <laughs> yeah. D decided to uh to, to put a ban on on incandescent light bulbs. Remember that? Yes, I do remember that. Okay, well, they've f flipped flipped the script now and uh the ban has been lifted. So all of those light bulbs Really? Are, all of those light all those light bulbs we went you out and, that. all those light bulbs we went out and stocked up on and are now sitting there in in the hall closet um yeah don't matter oh you, my god you, imagine that yeah, you have light bulbs all that hype about nothing yeah so uh and all that wasted money that they did yeah and some of these or whatever right so it's it's it says they're scrapping the ban on energy inefficient light bulbs uh, which was supposed to start on, on in January 2020, so uh, it would have the, the law, the rule would have prohibited sale of bulbs that do not reach the standard of efficiency. Blah blah blah. Either way, um, I got a bunch of bulbs, a bunch of those old incandescent bulbs I do too. that I bought during that. I keep using them. I have LEDs too, but yeah, yeah. So uh, whatever, I, I have those bulbs because. Um, yep, I still buy some of them. Well, I, I got enough to last me for 10 years. I don't know. Yeah, see, they, they said, you know, there was a big hype. Remember, we did a story. It was like four or five years ago or something. Now, who knows? But it was like, oh, go out and stock up now because it's all going to switch over. You're not, they're not going to be available. Right. The old ones. Yeah. Old. And that was a bunch of bullshit. It was. It was all bullshit. They were always available. Uh, uh, well, you could always find them. Well, that the, was a bunch of fucking hooey. Well, it was supposed to go away at the, at the beginning of 2020. So, right. So now they've changed their mind and said, "Ah, it's all right. You can keep selling them." <laughs> right. Oh, God. Anyway, so I got I got I got a big stockpile of incandescent bulbs that I'll use over time. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, are you familiar with the uh, Amazon Ring doorbell camera thing? Yeah, I've seen the thing, the ads for it or whatever. Okay. I'm not getting it, but I've seen the ads, yes. Good, don't get it. Oh, hell no. According to... Don't get Facebook portal, don't get any of those shit. According to Amazon, 
it's your fault if the ring camera violates your privacy. Uh, yeah, because you signed <laughs> up for it, dumbass. Uh, well, Don't sign up for the shit, dumbass. Well, Don't bring Alexa <laughs> in your house. What the fuck? Are you stupid? Yeah, hey, it says their, uh, their home's uh, subsidiary ring, which makes home surveillance equipment. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're surveilling your home. Um as partnerships with more than 600 law enforcement agencies nationwide, allowing those police to access your footage, and, and while Ring sets uh, terms on how and when it will share the footage with the police, anything the police do with it afterwards is entirely out of Ring's hands. Exactly. And the police say, well, we could share it with whoever we want, whenever we want. Yeah, fuck that. For as long as we want. Yeah. <laughs> See, here you go. The line gets crossed, right? Yeah. So you think you're... Yeah, uh, it's bullshit. You think this is a convenient comfort type item, and all you're doing is allowing them to do bad things to you. Surveil you. you by getting it. spy on you. Do, Look no, at you. No. You're going to the bathroom. When you're taking your clothes off, and going, you know, well, well, this, they can see everything. Well, do you want them to see you when you're fucking naked? I mean, come on. Do I'll, you? I'll show my ass. <laughs> yeah. Give them the big old fucking moon, dude. <laughs> That's it. All right. We got to do Fucking middle finger. That's right. We gotta do the last set here. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, sorry, Grandma. I'm sorry for that fucking interruption. No, that's all right. That's cool. I, I agree no, with you. No, fuck. I, I can't control these things. I know. I, I'm with you 100. percent All right, hon. Thank you. <laughs> all right. This all right. Is, uh, comfortably numb. <laughs> yeah, I was. I went. Yeah, I'm approaching that. Hopefully, like at one point tonight, I will be that. Let's all get there. <laughs> yeah. <Ba -dow. laughs> All right, that's a swinging version of Black Betty there by the Lost Fingers. Yeah, it's funny, it's good stuff. Uh, before that, we had Billy Strings covering uh, "Here Comes the Sun." Uh, that was only like three days ago, eleven nineteen, uh, at the Beachland Ballroom and Tavern. And we kicked it off there with comfortably numb with uh, scenes from The Simpsons, the Simpsons uh, television show, uh, cartoon thingy. Anyway, uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. It's been a great time. I had a good time. Hopefully, you all had a good time as well, listening in and talking there in the chat, having all that stuff. Now, tomorrow is the dork table, I assume. Uh, I know Grammy's not going to be around. It could be just Flash, but maybe somebody will join Flash on the dork table and uh, help him, whoever that may be. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so hopefully we'll have a, a dork table tomorrow. Uh, keep your fingers crossed on uh, that. I'll be on Sunday at my normal time, noon Eastern, with the Blues. Uh, a little bit before noon, but, you know, uh, let's call it noon. Uh, Eastern on Sunday. So uh, look forward to that. We play trivia here in the chat during that. And it's a good old time, uh, you know, answering dumb questions and arguing with the bot about, hey, how come that's formatted that way? Uh, and then following me at 3 p.m. Eastern is Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up the big old can of whoop-ass on ya all. Uh, I will be back again on Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern with Grim Leftovers. And then uh, Tuesday is Flash and Vinny. In a perfect world. Check the schedule over there on reallibertymedia.com for all the rest of the shows that come up throughout the week. Have yourself a great night, a great weekend, and a great life. Talk to you all later. Peace.